puzzles that I build I would refer to as non-complex geometry. My reason for that being is that they're really just faceted modifications when you think about it. There's not a whole lot of irregularity or concavity. It's all kind of symmetrical, or at least as symmetrical as my feeble hands can create. I've already explored the process of cutting and filling and extending in my last few videos, and I think it's time to change it up a little bit. You'll also note that I've been doing a lot of 3x3 mods lately. Now, I want to move beyond that. I want to start doing some more Megaminx mods and maybe some Gigaminx mods, and then trying some new and more interesting complex puzzles that I can modify and, you know, just basically doing what I do, experimenting and having fun with modifying twisty puzzles because this is cool. The 3x3 or the Rubik's Cube, it, it's very easy for people to kind of relate a puzzle like this to a puzzle like this. Everybody knows the Rubik's Cube and so when you look at something like this and you kind of see how it moves, you can understand what kind of transformation has taken place and it's easier to explain what I do than it is to show somebody like my Megamix play button over there which is just very, very hard for people to wrap their head around. This is beside the point. I did a puzzle a while ago, which was the Giga Rocket. I actually have a build video up on this channel. It's one of the few videos that I was able to salvage from my old channel. It used a very interesting technique for the rocket legs, which was kind of a concave section that I did on the end of my belt sander. I did that while the puzzle was all assembled, and that's all well and good. But there's another puzzle that I built, which was the Rainbow Rocket, and that had a really cool underside section. At the time that I was building it, I was trying to make it look like a rocket. It just ended up looking like one of those drill things from the Matrix. But it had a really interesting technique that I never got to show off properly, which was the sacrificial puzzle. The idea being is that you take multiple puzzles that have the same mechanism, you do a shape mob with one and you do a completely different shape mob with the other, with the intent to do a piece swap after the fact, and then get a final result that is impossible to create just on its own. I should probably take this moment to mention that piece swap modifications are also a totally valid and unique form of twisty puzzle modification in and of themselves. If you don't have any tools or equipment and you happen to have a couple puzzles that have the exact same mechanism but different shapes, you can swap between them and create entirely new puzzles. When I had one of my designs mass produced by Calvin Puzzle, the inverted house cube, all he had to do was put pieces of a 3x3 and a Fisher cube together, two puzzles that he already mass produced, and it was ready for mass production. No new pieces required. It's very cheap, it's very easy, and you can do it as well without any tools or equipment. But I want to showcase this technique mainly because it's very, very useful to build stuff that you wouldn't otherwise be able to build just by extending pieces and then putting them back together and sanding it as one big block. You can actually do a lot. In fact, it kind of opens up the door to a lot of modifications that would otherwise be impossible. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use a couple 3x3s and I'm going to try and build a puzzle similar to the Rainbow Rocket but of course out of a 3x3 not a Mega Minx and I'm going to explore this technique and kind of learn it a bit more for myself because I haven't really done it properly and take you guys along for the ride. So let's get started. Now I wasn't really sure what I was going to be building, which is kind of part of the course for my mods. I didn't really have much of a plan, but I did need something to work off. I would start with the sacrificial mod, kind of work out what it is that I was going to be working with, and then I would do the more complex mod. So I took the 3x3 over to the bandsaw, tilted the table to the holiest of numbers, and then I cut off four edges on each of the antipodal layers. Now this is what it would look like if it was done, but I'm not going to be finishing it up just yet. Okay, so now that I have built that puzzle, and we'll get to turning that up and turning that into what that's going to be in just a minute, I want to talk more about the main design. So I'm going to start by marking out a few areas that I'm going to cut because there are some kind of weird angles. Normally I don't mark them up, but I just want you to be able to know what it is that I'm doing. Okay, so the plan is I want to do your your standard cubic dihedron cut on the top face like that. So I want to leave this area preserved. And I want to cut that down from the middle here right down to the corner so I preserve all four of uh, these corners here. So that way I'm going to cut this area off on all four of the corners. I want to leave this whole face preserved because the, the cross section here, if you think of when you're solving at the cross, all of that is going to be replaced with the sacrificial puzzle. OK, 
Okay, so. Um, want to match this up to the lines, that should be good enough. Okay, so these are the two puzzles that we are going to be working on. Like I said before, this one is a Steinmetz solid, and I need that just for the pieces in the underside section. This one is actually going to be a lot bigger than this. Right now, this is just the base of what will be uh, quite an extension heavy modification. Now, I've been sitting down and looking at this one, and I've worked out that I'm going to need... A third, three by three. Because why do something when you can overdo something? But before we even talk about that, we might as well get to work on this guy. Now, I made a Steinmetz solid, a, a, or a two axis Steinmetz solid, uh, as I think it was the second build video of the sixth season of 30 Days 30 Build, an entire build video that was done all the way to completion and never found its way to YouTube. Uh, but in that video, I learned that doing this puzzle requires some extensions uh, because if you do it without extensions, then you end up sanding into the, the centerpieces and then you break through and it just it looks awful. So it's better to do something like this with extensions. I might have done them slightly too big, but it's all right. We're going to we're going to work on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand it by spinning it between my fingers like this. But it's not as easy as that. See, these pieces here, these big pronounced edges are going to provide more resistance on the belt sander than just these little center pieces. So I'm going to have to be a little more careful with this than I would otherwise with your typical barrel. You'll notice the puzzle bouncing up and down as I'm letting it spin between my fingers. I actually want to avoid this, and so I ended up sanding some areas just by curving them back and forth along the belt sander. I had to do this slowly all the way around, and I regularly tested it to see how well it rolled. The great thing about cylinders is you can always tell if they're a little bit off by how well they roll. In this case, don't roll. Alright, so now that everything is done with the Steinmetz solid, I'm going to extend out all of these parts on this face and I'm going to project them out while following these lines uh, of these faces here all the way to a point about this high. I took the top layer off and I got all the pieces ready to be extended and as I was extending them and putting everything back together, I began to reflect on the kind of design process that I utilized for this puzzle. I should re-mention that I didn't know what I was building when I started this, and I still kind of don't. And that's all part of the fun. I have an idea to shoot for, I know I'm building a rocket ship, but I have no idea how to get there. And so although it may seem repetitive, extending out areas and then refining the shape is a really good way to slowly get to what you're trying to build, without knowing what it was at the start. So long as you know the techniques, you can just jump in and do it. It just takes time. A lot of time. Probably why I spent two weeks cutting the stickers, but that's beside the point. I sanded down all the areas that were jutting out by using the faces that I'd already sanded down as a reference. This is something that I do a lot of. Now that we have done that, you can see the shape that I'm going for. It's going to come out to a point here. I underextended on these bits. They should be coming out to points. You shouldn't see any notches here. Uh, and I've also not extended the tip out all the way, so I'm gonna to have to repair those bits, but I won't worry about that now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the pieces from this puzzle and I'm gonna put them in the underside section of this puzzle and 
I'm gonna work out, I'm probably gonna to have to extend just a tiny bit on these bits. Uh, we'll see what goes on there. But for now, let me take the back off here and start swapping the pieces around. really see the uniform thickness of the extension, like a border all the way around. It's at this point in the design that I had a much clearer picture of what it is that I was building. Now that I was taking that center area apart and putting the Steinmetz solid pieces in, it would divide the four legs and it would make it easier for me to work out how big to make them and what kind of shape to make them too. And so now you can see the kind of shape that I was going for. You can see this curved area under here that curves around and uh, that looks really cool. Still a lot more to go though. These are supposed to be legs and right now the base here, this part is actually sticking out. So I've got to make these a lot longer. Now that I had those pieces in place, I could see where I needed to sand down. I didn't want to do any more extensions to make the puzzle any wider because I thought that would ruin the shape. And so I took it back over to my belt sander and I sanded down these areas here to make it look more octagonal as it tapers towards that point right at the top. This ended up being a really good idea because the centers of the Steinmetz solid curve back around again. And so you end up having that flowing pattern from the center all the way through up into the top. Even with the puzzle looking like this, I still needed a little more time to figure out what I was gonna do with the legs, but the middle and the top layer were pretty much completely done. So I took the puzzle apart and I extended all of those areas out with the intent to round them all over and then sand everything down so that I could get all of those parts into their final shape. All right, so we are done with the shaping of the first two layers. This piece here has to be repaired, but I'll fix that up. So now we have the pointy shape. That's exactly what we wanted. We have the curve of the Steinmetz solid. I took the center cap out because it actually extends beyond the, the face of um, uh, the bottom here. So now all I have to do is just focus on these four corners here and I wanna make rocket legs. Now, I mentioned that third three by three. Let me get that. Now, if I was a lesser person, I would use one of these to do uh, the extensions for the rocket legs. My initial plan was to mirror the cuts that I did for this one with this one, which is why it's marked up the same. And then I was gonna put these corners on inversely so that this slope here would mirror the one on the inside. And then I would have it come out to about here. And then I would, extend out these areas and then make the rocket legs. Now that's all well and cool, but if I don't need to use a third three by three, I won't. And I've decided to modify the design slightly by utilizing some of the remaining pieces from this top layer of the Steinmetz solid. The idea is, let's imagine if I take these four corners here and then put them on so that the curves kind of come outward from the inside and then I can build up on the outside and I can make rocket legs that taper to a point, but then the curves come out, so it just looks cooler. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this top layer off and I'm going to cut the internal mechanism parts off these cubies, and then I'm gonna stick them on like that. So there's gonna be four of them coming out and then I'll have to extend out these areas here and then just build out something like that. I think that's gonna look even cooler and then it saves me sacrificing a whole other three by three just for a couple pieces. I cut off each of the corners and then I very carefully glued them on to each of the pieces. After I did that, I filled around all of the edges and I extended out a little bit just to kind of even everything up. And this is what it looked like. Look at that. That is amazing. I'm really happy with how this is looking and I haven't even finished sanding all the legs yet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna finish up these last few pieces. All I have to do is just match these little surfaces here to uh, these surfaces by sanding these ones down. And then I'm gonna match uh, this surface here to this big one here on all four of these pieces. And then that's it, it's done. Sanding these faces down is pretty self-explanatory, but there was one other detail, which was that I had to make sure that the puzzle sat flat on all four of its legs. 
Now for a three point design like the Rainbow Rocket, that's not very hard to do. They can be off by a couple millimeters, but I lapped this puzzle on the belt sander while it was turned off just to knock off any high points and to make sure everything was sitting properly. And after that was done, I took everything apart to round over all of the pieces and finish this whole puzzle up. While everything was disassembled, I went ahead and I cut all of the stickers and two weeks later, this is the final result. This is hands down one of my favorite three x three modifications to date. This really is just a three x three at its core and it looks so cool. The sticker scheme was a little out of the ordinary. I kind of got carried away. I wasn't really sure what kind of color scheme I was going for and so I just went for all of them, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I really like how either end is cool and it moves towards the warmer colors in the center. And I also really love the addition of that cross in the center between all of the legs, which shows the, I, I guess, the, the engine's part of the rocket. Using a sacrificial puzzle really just made this project turn out so much better than it otherwise could have. I've tried building puzzles similar to this without using an extra 3x3 and it just didn't work. I can't wait to try some new, more complicated puzzles by utilizing multiple mechanisms that can fit together. But anyways, I hope you guys like this puzzle and hope you guys like this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. You see, most people like to think of themselves as the main character in the game of life. That's all well and good. I prefer to think of myself as the crazy guy you buy rare weapons and quest items from. It makes less demands on you and the dialogue is subjectively better.